This is why you need faith. It's not just about believing. It's about unlocking the profound mysteries of grace that envelop our lives every single day. In the heart of every believer, faith acts as an anchor, steadfast and unmovable. Like James tells us, faith without doubt is our solid ground amidst life's stormy seas. But what is this faith? It's more than just trust. It's a secure connection to God, a channel through which His grace flows into our lives. With faith, we see the unseen, believe the unbelievable, and achieve the impossible. It is not just believing in His existence, but in His promises, His goodness, and His plan for us. And grace, it's the beautiful unearned favor of God, a gift that saves us, shapes us, and elevates us to live a life beyond our imagination, all through faith. Today, let St. Alex Acebe guide us deeper into understanding how every moment of faith is a step closer to divine grace. His insights from his book, Divine Direction, remind us that faith is not just a part of life, it is what makes life divine. So embrace your faith. Let it flourish and watch as the grace of God transforms your life, one prayer, one step, one act of trust at a time. But today the emphasis will be on faith and grace, the summary of the truth. Now I've said that when you are born into this world, you have to go through three major families. Three major families. One, the first family we said is that you are born into a family that is carnal and worldly. Your parents brought you into this family. Our relatives, that is the first family. So we have our carnal family. And this is physical, carnal, worldly family. That is the very first one. Then the second family is where a person decides to go to church. So in the case of the first family, as we said, because you are conceived in sin. When you are brought into this family, the first family, you sin, continue to sin. To do right and the wrong in this kind of family, in this worldly family. You do right and wrong and right and wrong. And then it comes to the point where you say that, oh, I have to belong to a church. Or perhaps you are born into this church. And once a person starts going to church, the person starts leaving some of the bad things. You are born into sin, so you do right and wrong. When you go to church, then some of the wrong things you you stop. But some you don't stop. So whoever goes to church has been called. And when you are called, it is there that you have to decide to be born again or not. When <clears throat> you are called to this family, this church family, then you are taught. Some will continue to be in it. They have reduced the sin they were committed before going to church, becoming a member of the church. That is the second family. So some <coughs> continue to be in this church and do some wrong and right, even though the wrong things might have been reduced because the person now goes to church. So some of the wrong things, some stop doing because I've been called. But in this second family, some are chosen. In this second family, some are chosen. Some will be in this family, church family, and will never be chosen. 
they have reduced the sins they were committing before becoming members of the church, but still they continue to do some sins, commit some sins. So it is only very few who surrender to God wholeheartedly and become born again. So in this large family, most of them, that's why I always preach that 99% of people who go to church go to hell. Because 99% of those in this church continue to do some wrong. It is only those who are born again, even the Holy Spirit, who stop sinning completely in this second family. Stop sinning completely. And when you stop sinning completely with the Holy Spirit in you, now you are now, even though you are in the second family, you are now upgraded to the third family, which is called the Universal Church of God. Universal Church of God consists of all people in all churches who are born again with the Holy Spirit in them. You see how God works? We call this universal church. That is the third family. So it is this third family that you should be in before you are considered as a child of God. So you see, you see, you see this. So in the second family, most people rest there and they don't come into the third family because they continue to be, to be doing wrong things and they don't surrender wholeheartedly to God. And therefore, they do some wrong and some right. That is the second family. That is the church. Now, in this church, only one percent in this second family who become born again Christians. And when you become born again Christians with, with the spirit in you, you now belong to the third family of God. That third family of God is called Universal Church. So you have local churches, Presby, Methodist, Anglican, and so on. These are local churches. All of us, you go to that church, and then when you go to that church, then you are preached, you hear, and some of the sins you stop. Those who stop some of them and continue to sin, they form 99% of the church, the second one. Now, only 1% surrender wholeheartedly to God and get the Holy Spirit of God. So immediately you get the Holy Spirit of God, even though you are still in the church, which is the second family, you are now promoted to the third family. And it's this third family which you call Universal Church. And this universal church is the church we call the third family, and it is all the born again Christians in all churches in the world who belong to this. All churches in the world, Methodist, Presbyterian, Anglican, and so on, all those who are born again in them. And it is this, this group that forms one person. And the second family forms 99% will be in it and will never be born again. And this is the whole of the whole world. And this is what we are going to preach to the whole world. That many are in the second family and they never get into the third family which is the universal church of God, which consists of only those who have got the Holy Spirit in them. That is only those who go to heaven. Because those are the only people who are God's children. That's why I say that we have a long way to go. And until we preach this to the whole world, many will continue to be in this second family and will never ever enter the third family, which is the Universal Church of God. And this Universal Church of God are those who are born again and go to other paradise for heaven or soul heaven the sixth heaven. So in this also we have the fourth because 
All of it brought to the third. But the fourth one is this, those who go to sixth heaven straight away. This is the fourth family. That's a third, very few to go to the sixth heaven straight away. That's why we count ourselves most blessed. And today I summarize faith and grace, which is this last week and last week. So faith gives substance to our hopes. We have faith. It gives substance material to our hopes and makes certain of realities <coughs> that we do not see. So faith gives substance, that's why, right, to our hopes and makes certain of realities that we do not see. That is it. We don't see it. But then, you believe, and that belief leads on to faith. And that faith, they said that it should be absolute. It's absolute. That faith is absolute. You don't go back anywhere. And it is, this becomes your life. That you live. Baptism is effective only through faith. That is why you don't just call anybody and baptize in the Holy Spirit. It is when we are converted that you must be baptized. So when you are converted, then you are given the Holy Spirit. So baptism is effective only through faith. One's faith is one's life. One's faith, your faith, is the life that you live. The life that you live, the faith that you have in God. And that is why you live a sinless life because of your faith in God. Because only sinlessness that will take one to hell. That is for faith. So the life that I live in the flesh, according to Galatians 2 20, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith and the Son of God. The life that I live, so the life that we, it is the faith. So once we get faith, then the life that we read is perfect. Perfect, the life. That is, that is the life. That's the faith, according to the faith that you have. It is the genuine faith which is the abiding trust and confidence in God that compels one to do his will. It compels you to do his will. And the life of whatever you do, every what you say, your action, your, your thoughts, thoughts, your actions, and your utterance, all this you go to confirm. That is the life that you do. And you are living according to your faith. That is why we say that whatever you do without faith is sin. Whatever you do. That's why if you are military to do this one, you have to take your own decision. So that when you do it, that means that that is the faith that you have. So when you, are, you don't have, you are not certain. You don't commit yourself. That's why we say that we live by faith. And your faith should be linked to your conduct. The faith should be linked to your conduct. So whatever you do, will depend on the faith that you have. And you have your faith in God. And therefore, obedience of God comes in. So real faith obeys God. And obedience serves as the only evidence of faith. Your obedience will obedience. Obedience to God. It is that is the only thing that is confirming that you are a child of God. And it is the faith that you have 
that will make you obey God. So real faith obeys God, and obedience serves as the only evidence of faith. Obedience, what you do, that is the only thing to confirm your faith. So you say, I'm born again, born again, and you sin. Born again, I'm born again. Oh, how I love Jesus and you sin. That is false faith. The real faith in God is obedience to God. And obedience that we have is sinlessness. That is obedience to God. So, changing one's life to conform to God's will declares a faith that is genuine. Changing one's life to conform to God's will declares a faith that is genuine. So, the genuine faith we see in the life that we live. And the life that we live is obedience to God only. Genuine faith and obedience to God are inseparable. We cannot separate them. The genuine faith, the obedience to God are inseparable. If your faith is genuine, then you obey God. If your faith is genuine, then you obey God. So the two are inseparable. Genuine faith and obedience to God are inseparable. For obedience comes from faith. The separable because the obedience comes from the faith that you have. This is the summary that we have on faith. Now let's move on to the summary on grace. God's grace. Grace is the summary of the attributes of God. It's the summary of the attributes of God. It is your grace. Then the love is there, blessing is there, patience is there, mercy is there, all within the grace. That is the grace that we get from God, the attributes of God. God showed his grace to the Israelites <clears throat> by making them his children. God said, you are my children. This is the grace of God. He said, you are my children. They didn't do anything. That's why I'm saying that grace is undeserved favor. Favor that is given to you. So it's God himself said, you are my children. All right. So you are my children. But these are the commandments. That you have to obey. So you see, those who kept God's commandments, who became his real children. So the, you get them the grace. No, you are my children. All right, but these are my laws. So you have to keep these laws. All right, don't keep these laws. It means that you, you don't regard me. You disobey me, and therefore you cannot be my children. That's why 23,000 of them died through fornication. This is 23,000. The 10, they died. Why? Because don't fornicate. The Ten Commandments, <coughs> which is wrong, that is all. So that the grace is there, but then you have to accept it by obeying me. If you don't obey me, it means that you have not accepted the grace which I have given freely to you. You are my children. I love you. But the condition is this. So, the Israelites, by making them his children, are giving them laws to follow through Moses and be, and be saved. And many were not saved because they would not obey God. In the same way, God showed his grace to the Gentiles by sending Jesus Christ as a gift through whom they should be saved. 
through whom they should be saved. So Jesus Christ, the grace came through him. So the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the love that God showed. The grace, God gave the grace to Jesus Christ. And through him, so the grace of our Lord and Savior, and the love of God, the love that God shows by giving this grace to all. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. So grace is a free gift from God to mankind. And whoever, whosoever accepts it becomes a child of God. So it's great for everybody. But people choose to live worldly life. They do not accept it. The Israelites who kept the God's commandments became his children. And those who did not never became God's children. In the same way, the Gentiles who accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior became his children. And those who did not never became his children. And that is what we are living here now. The Gentiles. The grace is there for everybody. Not selected, no, but for everybody. But those who accept become God's children. And those who don't accept, because God does not force, force us to do anything. Free mind, so you take your own decision. But your decision is that you, well, you see people moving up and down, appearing to be, hope, to be happy, and they are never happy because if you don't have God, you pretend to be happy. The perfect happiness is in the Lord, as we are seated here. You don't have to, 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 to eat something which is, which is nice before. No, no, no. That's, no. After that, what else? After that, what else? After this, what else? You still, you still see that you are, you are not whole. You are not at peace. You can never be at peace unless Christ is in you. Whatever situation you serve, oh, many are the affairs of the righteous. God defends. So problems will come here and there. And God, that's what I said. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm the Almighty God. I created you, I created heaven and earth. So if you have the what test, why, why should you worry? There shouldn't be any really worry. As we treated, why a Christian should not worry. Your mission on this earth has been accomplished. <coughs> Grace to and through Jesus Christ. God gave Jesus Christ that grace. And then it is through him that we have the grace. John 1.17 For the law was given by Moses, but the grace and truth came by Jesus. These are the two. So, through Moses, yes, the grace is there. God said, you are my children. This is what you have to do. In the same way, I've sent Jesus Christ. That is the grace. Take him. Once you take him, yes, you fulfill. Once you take him, you cannot sin. That's why the two are the same. Keep of the commandments, taking Jesus Christ, that's why you see that Jesus Christ is the end of the law. And you take him, we don't do anything which is wrong. This is what we are going to preach the whole world. Now the next one, look. 2.40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him, Jesus Christ. Talking about the child, Jesus Christ. God gave him that. And the child grew, meaning Jesus Christ and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And Satan went and tried him. Jesus Christ who created Satan, and when he came down here, Jesus was tried by Satan. Jesus Christ himself had created. And the word was made flesh, John 1.14, and dwelt among us. 
and beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, still Jesus Christ. So the grace was given to Jesus Christ. So that immediately took Jesus all the grace, by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That's why we say that we are saved by grace, but through faith. And the faith that we get through Jesus Christ. Titus 2.11 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The grace is there. Jesus Christ has come. The grace of God that bringeth salvation. So it's only through him that we get salvation that we are saved. It's only through Jesus Christ. This is the only begotten Son of God. And therefore, if you take Jesus Christ, become a co heir. This is what the Bible says. Become a co heir. A heir. You succeed God. I say that I'm, I'm born again, I'm, I'm a Christian and a sin. Go ahead with Christ and your sin. Ambassador of Christ, of God and your sin. Acts 15, 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Even as they. Through the grace. This is true. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is all in all. The only way of salvation for any person is through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God revealed in Jesus Christ is applied to human beings for their salvation by the Holy Spirit, who is called the Spirit of Grace. So the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Grace. That is in Hebrews 10.29. The grace of God revealed in Jesus Christ is applied to human beings for their salvation by the Holy Spirit, who is called the Spirit of Grace. So the Holy Spirit represented Jesus Christ and God himself. That's why Jesus Christ said, the comforter that my, God, my, my Father was sent in my name. So Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, that came, was sent in his name. The comforter. That's why we see that the Spirit of grace. So still the Holy Spirit is the Trinity. God gives it, Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit. The grace through them. The Spirit is the one who binds Christ to his people. The Spirit is the one who binds Christ to his people so that they receive forgiveness, adoption to sonship, and newness of life, as well as every spiritual gift or grace. That is Ephesians 4, 7. The grace, spiritual all the spiritual gifts by the grace of God. All the spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts of uh, what is it? Uh, wisdom, knowledge, um, healing, miracles, prophecy, faith, the sending of the Spirit, eloquence. That is the speaking towards the and the interpretation of tongues. These are the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Paul makes it clear that salvation is not something that is earned by work, but received only as a gift of grace, as stated in the following. 
So it is not by yourself doing this and doing that 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 becomes saved. The grace is there in the sense that in the case of the Israelites, God said, you are my children. This is what you have to do. So the grace already given to them, you are my children. But if you are my child, this is what you have to do. In the same way, Gentiles, take Jesus Christ. It says, repent, be converted, be baptized. The faith is there. So once the faith is there, then you have taken Jesus Christ. And once you take Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is given to you. Jesus Christ made it very simple. Accept, accept to be born again. That is the summary of everything. Accept to be born again. And then it says that to be born again, the second one, you have to give the Holy Spirit. So that when genuinely you believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit is granted you. So you have taken Jesus Christ. Once you have taken Jesus Christ, then you are a child of God. So the grace is through Jesus Christ. In the case of the coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we, in, we conclude that man is justified by grace without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law, it's not the deeds of the law, but this time, accepting Jesus Christ. Once you accept Jesus Christ, the grace is there. The grace that you have accepted that grace, once you accept it, Holy Spirit is given to you. When the Holy Spirit is given to you, you cannot sin. You, you sin only when you succumb, yield to Satan, because <coughs> Satan is all, always around. And that is why when one gets the Holy Spirit, one loses it. The possibility of coming back is extremely slim. Extremely slim. <coughs> Very slim. Now, to him that worketh the word will reckon this. Grace, however, must be accompanied by faith. The person must trust in the mercy and favor of God. This is the grace. So today we have treated faith and grace. And the two go together. Faith, the grace is given, but faith must come. How do you get faith? You must be preached to. You must repent. You must be converted. And to confirm that you have been converted, that's why we read the saying that faith is the life that we need. That is the life. So once you have faith, the life that you need is sinless life. That is the only way, brethren. That is the only way that confirms that you obey God. So if you, anything that you commit says that you don't obey God, that you don't regard God, that you want to serve Satan now, because it's Satan who makes people to sin. And that is why it is imperative that, <clears throat> that you get the Holy Spirit in you to be your backbone. So it's only the Holy Spirit that we have that will make you resist. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that Satan cannot, cannot deceive you. Satan can deceive. Adam and Eve, they were deceived. They had everything. And they were deceived. Jesus Christ, who created Satan, Satan was going to deceive him. But why? He didn't succeed because Jesus Christ, God Himself, we should not be able, uh, Satan should not be able to deceive us because but that is why we, we meet every Sunday to refresh ourselves, to remind ourselves. That is why 
gathering like this is very important. Lest Satan gets access to us when we are alone. And not not somebody who says, I, I don't go to church. Okay, I don't commit any sin. How? We do commit sin. So long as you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, don't have God in you, you commit sin. So long, so long. Just examine yourself. Examine yourself. We cannot. We cannot stand Satan. The highest, next to God. And that's why you, you, you thought that you will oh, be higher than God. Because you saw how angels were praising God and so on. <coughs> because God has given power. And that is why it is only Christ, it's only when you take Christ, that you will, it's only when you take Christ, that you will overcome Satan. Only, the only way. Hence, the book that we are writing says that the only way to heaven is sinlessness. The only enemy of mankind is Satan. And the only problem of mankind is sin. Hence, this is the Supreme Church. Because it's a church where people don't sin. That's why we call ourselves congregation of saints. We have treated saints. We said the saint, saint right in God, that is the one who is made holy in God. And because you are holy in God, you don't sin. So long as you sin, no, no, you haven't reached sin. No, 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 but temptation, what is temptation? Satan has no influence on us. No matter how, problems will come here and there. No, the one sees you. Look, if you have eyes to see, what Satan does when he sees you, anybody with, with uh, Satanism, Satanic influence in, in the person, when he sees you, he has to bow. He has to bow down before he passes. He has to bow down. They have shown this in several ways. They <coughs> throw the stick there, they, they, they frustrate, they make incantation, 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 or they, they, they take, when they take, they don't look at the car again, they move that way, they go away. Why? We are surrounded by, by, by angels. We are surrounded by angels. Whoever has the Holy Spirit in him has angels protecting him. Fortified. We thank God for this. Amen. 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 The epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Romans. The epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Romans. Romans chapter 12. Christian conduct. Christian conduct. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. Having then gifts different according to the grace 
that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Upon that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue instant in the prayer. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will pay, said the Lord. Therefore, if there are any hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Here endeth the reading of the sweet word and the holy word of God. May the Lord add his blessing to this. His name be the honor and praise. Amen. Amen. self explanatory Christian conduct. This is what is expected of a Christian. By the message of God that is present to our bodies a living sacrifice. The sac sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contract heart of God that will not despise. A broken and contract your heart. Not to sacrifice yourself and then you die. No, it says that holy, which is acceptable unto God. Go heartedly. You give yourself to God. It's not, it's not uh, partial. And most people partial because they serve Satan and they serve God. They serve the world and they want to be godly and worldly. It's only godliness that takes one to, go to, to heaven. Only godliness. God is in you. God is in us. Behold, God is in us. So God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, worldliness. Two things, either you take the world or you take God. The problem is most people want to take the world and take God at the same time. This is the only problem in the whole world. It's total surrender. It's godliness only to go to heaven. It's godliness only. There's, there's no other way. 
That's why he's saying here, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's perfection. And perfection is when you are sinless. It's the perfection. There's nothing wrong you do. And you know it. You know it. If you do something which is right, you know. Wrong, you know it. That is perfection. For I say, though the grace given unto me, every man that is among you ought to think of himself more highly than he ought to be. He boasts only in God. No materialism. We boast in God because God is in us. We boast in God that we are God's children. That is all. For I say, highly ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith here is mentioned in the case of the grace. It says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, the eye sees, the ear hears, the mouth you speak, utterances, many members in the body. So the eye has its office to see, the ear has office to hear. And therefore, whatever is given to us is what we use because we don't have the same level. No, not the same. We have different gifts. You may have two or three or four of these gifts. We have only one of the gifts. That is also the, the grace that we are talking about. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. That is also the grace. So he says that, um, so we being many, one body in Christ and every one members one of another, having the gifts different according to the grace. So whatever gift is given to you, you use it in perfection to the brim. If you are a preacher, the only thing is that you may be born again with God in you before God uses you. But the problem is that most people have not been chosen by God. And that is the whole, the woe of the whole world. Most people have not been chosen by God to preach the word of God. To prophesy, you must become God's child. Holy Spirit in you. To be a teacher, to preach the gospel, to be a priest, to be a pastor, the first and foremost thing is that you must become a saint. Chosen by God. The one you're chosen by God, whatever you do, it comes from God. Whatever you say comes from God. If you pronounce benediction, benediction comes from God. May the grace of our Lord and save this Christ and love of God. And full fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's from God. The grace. It says, Oh, he that exalted exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth, with diligence and so on and so forth. Mercy, be merciful and cheerful. If you give anything, you should be cheerful. Because you see that God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. And one thing is that people don't know that God knows your mind. And therefore, if, if you see somebody and you hate him, you know that within you, you don't, don't like the person. God knows everything about us. It's very pathetic. God created us, he knows everything about us. So as you are, so does he see you. He sees you as somebody who pretends. And most people will pretend. A Christian does not pretend. Your ye is ye and your nay is ye. When you say yes, you mean yes. When you say no, you mean no. Know that you say yes, and within you it is no. <laughs> Brethren, we are the most blessed. <coughs> Let love be without dissimulation. That is, you don't disguise yourself. 
concealment. A poor that which is evil, <coughs> not anything which is evil. The kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another, <coughs> not sloughing in business, not you shouldn't be lazy. A Christian cannot be, not be lazy. A Christian with Christ in you, <coughs> say you are lazy. <coughs> no. Jesus don't do that. Christians don't do that. Serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Problems, difficulties will come, tribulations. That's it. I've come the world. <coughs> I created the world, I created you, so once you take me, that's why I say, seek ye first the kingdom of God, <coughs> it's righteousness. All other things are other than to you. People are busy moving here and there, making money. I'm the Lord that giveth, provideth. That's why we are afraid. When you take God, you just take God, and that's all. It's love, it's grace which has been given to you, and you work on that grace. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality, and so on. That's why we say that after fasting for three days, make sure that you give arms. You give arms to people. God has blessed us. To whom much is given, much is expected. So we give arms. Day in and day out. After fasting, make sure that you give arms. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and not a curse. Christians don't curse. That's why we read here. It says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay it. Vengeance is mine, I will repay it. That's the word of God. It comes from God. And therefore, Christians don't, don't curse. Bless those who curse you. That's what the Bible says. You also, read this from Matthew 5 44. And bless them. God bless you. And says, rejoice with them. That do rejoice. Yes. Let's say that somebody is happy about something which is not bad. Then you rejoice the person. You don't, because the person is happy, you go and frown. Because the person is happy. No, rejoice those who rejoice. And those who are bereaved, who we see that they are in sorrow. You, that is, what you have to do. You be in his position. That's what you have to do. You, 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 you empathize. You empathize with people according to the person's situation. The compass to no man evil for evil. That is, you do not repay. Oh, this one, oh, then. He has done this, so I'm also going to do this. <laughs> no, not a Christian. A Christian cannot do that. A Christian cannot do that. Retaliate. You don't retaliate. And that's why he says, if it be possible, as much as serve in you, live peaceably with all men. Don't hurt anybody. No. You greet everybody you come across. Yes. We greet always. But if you greet the person who doesn't want to respond, what else can you do? Then you leave. You don't bear the person any grudge, you know. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Do not retaliate yourself. Avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. Have patience. For it is written, vengeance is mine and our Repeat. We can we can stand the wrath of God. No. So that if anything happens, you are offended and so no. God is in control. And whoever offends a Christian, the person is very good. Some place in the Bible you see that like some put something which is put on the neck in the neck and then they are cast into into, into water. It's very great. It's very good to offend a Christian who is sinless. It's God who is in him. And therefore, it's God that you're offending. 
That's why he said that vengeance is mine, not yours. Just praise me, do that which is expected of you. That's all. It's only sin that you have to fear. But you, you won't say, no, 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 how do you say? Just leave everything to me. I'll take vengeance. Who can stand the wrath of God? Therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. The person who doesn't like, you know, the person doesn't, but if he has problems, help the person. It says, therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he test, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Coals of fire on his head. This is what God is saying. So, what, what should we worry? They don't have to worry about anything. That's why we say that. We are above all. The heaven of heavens. That is the sixth heaven. The heaven of heavens. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll pray the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen.